Are you stupid? Are you dumb? Are you a fool? Well, even if you are, I have four foolproof ways in order for you to gain wealth on ladder in order to eventually then trade for those godly items that you want. Much like in real life, someone will pay you to do a job for them. That's where a lot of these come in. You don't really have to get out there and get incredibly lucky. All you got to do is put in a little bit of work, and that's how you get your value. Now, the first one here is actually getting lower runes from the Countess. This one is pretty well known to run the Countess in order to get low runes to make the rune words that you need. But some people are incredibly lazy. They do not want to do that. They would rather just give you, like, I don't know, a pull rune or an ist rune for a whole bunch of sets in order to maybe re-roll their spirit to try to get 35 FCR, or perhaps they're just too lazy to go get an insight set for runes, so they'll trade you something a little bit higher just for those four little lower runes. Now they are incredibly easy to get because you can actually get all the runes for both of these two rune words from even just the Nightmare Countess. It is absolutely bananas, but some people are really that lazy. You can kind of run the Countess over and over again in order to get those sets. Now, when you are going down to the Countess, it's incredibly easy. All you have to do is go down and turn left. This works like 8 out of 9 times, 9 out of 10 times. I don't know the exact odds, but almost every time, as long as you just go left as possible, you'll find your way down to the next level. Now, along the way, you can definitely kill champion packs, giving you an extra opportunity to find good items, but also people are known to target the ghost packs on the way down. Ghost packs actually have an elevated rune drop chance giving you an opportunity to maybe get lucky along the way and find something like a vex rune or even a burr or a jot or something like that now just for examples here i'm actually running this with a level 65 sorceress with negative 80 fire res like negative 60 something lightning res and you can even go do nightmare countess and build up this wealth with a character this terrible now, obviously, if you run the Hell Countess, it's slightly more difficult. All of her minions are immune to cold, and you'll get an opportunity to get a rune up to Is from her from her rune drop table. And obviously, being in Hell, you can get all other types of high runes, even up to low, from around the Countess there. If you get crazy lucky, maybe even get something like one of those high runes. Now, coming in with the next one, we're going to piggyback off that one because part of this run is actually part of how you can gain wealth in another way. And that's actually farming the keys that you need in order to open the portals to farm torches. Now, you don't actually have to farm the torches yourself. All you need is a character just good enough in order to kill the characters that do drop the keys. Now, those keys come from the Countess, from the Summoner, and from Manilathak. And those are in order of how difficult they are. The Countess, pretty darn easy. The Summoner, takes a little bit longer. Neelithak, absolutely devastating sometimes. Now, much like I mentioned in the first one, how you can kill ghost packs along the way, when you're going down to the Countess, when you're heading out to the Summoner, don't sleep on killing champion packs along the way, but also there are ghosts here too that you can go ahead and take out because they do have that elevated rune drop chance. You do have to watch out, make sure you do not kill them over the little space area outside the pass, because if you do, they will not drop anything. Now, Neelothak is going to be quite the bugger. He has a corpse explosion skill that will absolutely wreck you if your budget. There's a bunch of succubi. There could be souls around. It is really crazy down there. It's going to be real tough for you. So you probably need a little bit better character. And also, if you have a nature's peace ring, it has slain monsters rest in peace. So then Neelothak cannot use its corpse explosion against you. It can help you out. But that is obviously a kind of tough ring to get early on, especially. So these keys being tough to get from Neelothak, it makes them the most valuable. They are definitely in order of value, but if you get the keys in a complete set, you can trade those away to somebody who's got their budget smiter, who's going to be farming torches early on, and that is a great way to get wealth. So these next couple I'm going to mention here are actually great ones to do early on, but they actually do hold roughly the same value all throughout ladder because it's stuff that people like to do it's really fun rng based type stuff not for you but for them the first one i'm gonna talk about here is actually you can trade people in game gold i don't know if you've seen now but the gambling screen now has that refresh button making it much easier to gamble much faster and for a lot of people a lot more fun because you can get a ton a ton a ton of in-game gold and you can gamble even faster giving you more opportunities to get amazing items 
it is incredibly easy to get in-game gold as well. I mean, with auto gold pickup, you get tons of it already. As you're running around in cow games or chaos games or you're leveling in Bale, you can literally just grab different wands and different orbs for the sorceress, different type of body armors that'll sell for 35k a piece, and you can just go back to town through little or no work to yourself. Just go ahead and sell stuff that people were leaving behind to get this in-game gold. Now, the 10 million in-game gold isn't going to automatically catch you like a burr rune or something, but you trade a little bit here, you trade a little bit there. You get it for literally doing nothing, just doing nothing. You can build your wealth up slowly that way. The very last one I'm going to talk about here is actually saving up crafting supplies, and this includes gems, junk jewels, those lower runes, and trading those to people in order for them to do the crafting. Now, if you do crafting, you're going to take a chance on wasting all those different supplies and not getting anything in return. But people love to gamble on this game. They love the risk because you could get something absolutely godly worth many high runes. But I tell you, from a lot of experience, you're more than likely not going to get anything all that great. It takes a lot, a lot, a lot of tries when you're crafting in order to get those perfect 220 amulets and things like that. Now piggybacking off the first one, when you farm the Countess, you can get a lot of these lower runes. I will always save the Ral runes separately because caster amulets are by far the most popular craft to do. Those good crafted caster amulets are absolute necessities for some very, very powerful and important builds here in Diablo 2 Resurrected. Also, a lot of people will just throw out jewels that aren't that good. You can actually save these up and trade them to people that are looking to craft because like I said, for a lot of these, people don't want to put in the work. They don't want to put in the effort to save all this stuff up over time. Now the gems that will have the most values are going to be amethyst and then a little bit lower is rubies. But save all the other ones too because you can take those regular gems. A lot of people will transmute them in a cube with a grand charm they got from Bale, Neolithic, or Diablo because they'll be high enough level to get up to 45 to life and one to a character's skill tree. So the rune I always hear those are worth. It's going to fluctuate so don't take this as gospel. But you can usually get like an ist rune for 40 of those at some point here in the ladder. Maybe not right at the beginning, but in a couple of weeks. But all these are going to be strategies of you getting things and then trading them to instead now get the things that you're looking for. So you may think like, okay, I get all this stuff. What kind of value? What am I really going to do with this stuff? Now, all of this is going to require trading of some kind in order to get the objects or the items that you actually want. Whether you're going to in-game trade, which sometimes can be hard to meet up with people and find them. Or if you're going to use an external site of some sort, I have a trade channels in my Discord that there is a link in the description to, but there are all other types of trade websites. There's Tradery, there's D2JSP, which I know gets a bad rap, maybe rightfully so, I'm not going to wade in with my opinion on that. There's, uh, let's see, Diablo Dex I've heard of. There's all different kinds of ones out there. Other creators have made videos about their favorite, or you can just go ahead and Google and look them up. But you take this stuff and you trade them eventually probably for like rune value, which is essentially the currency, and then you can get the items you need to actually make your character a lot better. And now the next thing we're going to talk about is you hitting the like button and subscribing up if you're new to the channel and checking out one of these videos up over here. YouTube knows you're going to like it because they see what you watch, and then they're going to give you a video right over here that you know you're going to like. Peace out, fellas, and don't forget, keep slaying.